Well, I've not done a video for quite a while, folks. I've been busy on my other channel, plus we're decorating, we've been doing a bit of uh, vlogging on my other channel, but um, the weather's actually broken now and it's a little bit fine out here today, so I thought I'd just get out here. My workshop sh shop is still in a mess. I've still got work to do on the Mondeo with the uh, back glass quarter lights and also the front brakes, but now the weather's getting a bit better. That should be coming up hopefully pretty shortly. But I thought I'd dig out one of these old lawnmowers here, look. Just a cheap one. Let's get that in the workshop. Let's see if we can get it running. As you can see, Jim has been doing a little bit of uh, spraying in here and he's covered up my workbench, which is nice for change. Let's just get that light on. I want to convert all these lights to um, LED ones when I get a bit of time, so that's another little job I've got to do. All right, let's get this off of here. Just remove this paper. Nope. Right, must have a good clear out in here soon. I've still got these panels to sort out, folks. I've actually bought some um, more of this aluminium tape here to go over these. Uh, one of my subscribers has always said he's sending some paint along, but um, I really need to get it done. I've, I've been waiting for the paint to come, but it's not arrived, so I've, I've actually ordered some. I will find the use for the paint as well, so. If you are watching, mate, thanks very much anyway. I will find another use for it. So let me just get these off of the bike rack. It's not a bike rack, is it? Right, that's a bit better. So, i just come out here, folks, and I didn't realise I have this one here as well. This is a big self-drive uh, McCulloch, I think, by the looks of it. So, uh cables seem to be in order so i think we'll pull this one out instead um again i don't know anything about it it was bought probably last summer sometime so i'll just get it inside and get it on the ramp right okay that's it on the ramp now all in all the deck looks to be solid there doesn't appear to be anything broken on it at all it's got a briggs and stratton classic lump on it it's a mcculloch 46, I thought I'll take it that's 46 centimeters. Uh, 500 CD cut lawnmower premium. It's got the Sprint XC40 badged classic engine on it. And it's not priming, there might not be no fuel in it. Uh, the handles all seem to be there. The adjuster's looking good, Nick. Now it looks like there's plenty of tread on the tyres. Let's uh, take the engine oil out, see if we've got any uh, oil in it and what the state it's in. Well, I have to wipe that down, it looks like it's too, it might be overfilled. So let's get that out again and just give it a wipe down, because I have tipped it on its side a little bit when I was uh, moving it in here, so it might be okay, it might not, let's have a look. In actual fact, it's bang on the money, and it looks pretty clean oil as well, so um, that's a good sign. Let's put that back in, and uh, I like to just take the spark plug out and have a look, just to see if there's any uh, possible issues with running or whatever. So let's get this plug out. There we go. I don't know anything about this machine folks well it looks like a pretty new plug and it doesn't look like it's uh, done any work at all you can still see there that the um, the threads and all that are spotless can't smell any fuel on it so looking in there there's a little bit of carbon build up but you'd expect that anyway so it looks like what someone might have done here is um, had this and it packed up and they've probably done a little bit of work on it to try and get it running in fact that ring hadn't been compressed either the actual little ring there that sits underneath the spark plug so that must have obviously a brand new brand new plug in it a b2lm which is correct 
So next thing to check is the air filter. Let's just make sure that uh, we don't spot any potential issues with this. Let's have a look. Yet again, it's uh, obviously been cleaned by the looks of it. Let's take it out. Genuine Briggs and Stratton one. That's done no work whatsoever. Look at that, look. A little bit, but that's about all. So, I'm going to leave that off for the minute. Because the next thing I'll inspect is the springs. So, looking at this, I can see that the um, speed has possibly been altered on this because that little lug there has been bent forward to make it run faster. So someone has had this off and been in here, but the springs are on and in the correct location. The governor arm is running freely. I'd be quite partial to putting some fuel in there. There's none in there, or there's a tiny little bit in there, but it's below the, um, the suction tube by the looks of it. So I'm gonna put some fresh fuel in there. But before I do that, I'm just gonna take the grass box off and just put that over there for the moment. Stand it down there. The reason being is I wanna check underneath it, folks, just to make sure the blade's okay and that the, the crank is not damaged at all. I've not put that cab pack, uh, cap back on. Anyway, I'll pull that back. And if I lean this back, I've actually got a uh, a bungee clip on my table where I can hold the lawnmower down. So I'll keep it up in the air like that. So coming underneath it, the blade looks to be okay. Now I'm just gonna take the brake off and I can do that with my big clip. Just to hold that like that. That'll enable me to be able to spin the blade around. So let's just have a little look here. Don't forget, this can't fire up, folks. I've got the plug lead off. Now what I'm looking for here is even gaps either side of the uh, deck. And when I rotate this, I'm looking for that center bolt not to wobble about. And I can also feel that the wheels are creeping forward, which means that the self-drive is actually working. So that actually looks all fine. And that blade actually, that looks pretty sharp. So all in all, I've got a good feeling about this lawnmower that this might actually start and run. But as I say, look at them wheels, look at the tread on them wheels. This may not have done any work. So I do suspect that this may have a running issue. It might be hunting, it might be puffing out smoke. It could be doing any of them sort of things which would indicate a carburetor problem, which we've had, and we've done many, many of these on this uh, lawnmower, or this type of engine anyway. So let's put it back on its deck. Just take that clip off of there. Drop that down there. Put that back on its four wheels. Like that. So we know we've got oil. We know we've got a decent spark plug in there. Looks like a new one. We know we've got a decent air filter. We haven't got any fuel in it. So my next thing now is to put some fuel in this, see if it fire up. Right, let's get some fresh fuel in here. This is just basic E10, folks. Nothing special. All right, let's just whack some of this in there. Right, that'll do. It feels nice to work out here again. I've not been out here for a good while working. Definitely over the winter period. Hence you've had a couple of tinkering videos. Right, so let's put that on there. I think we've got enough in there. So I'm gonna press the primer bulb now and hopefully we will see fuel start to jet into the carburetor. There we go, look at that. Strong as anything, look at that. Can you see that? Just what we're looking for. So I'm gonna give that four or five pumps. Right, so I'm gonna put the um, 
air filter back on again simply because it has been serviced by the looks of it so if this does start and we don't need any remedial work to it that's money sitting out in my garden so all i will say is that this hasn't obviously been winterized this has been sitting out in all the rain and snow and everything that the weather's thrown at it this, this winter and even through last summer so i'm just making sure that i've got nothing underneath the deck as well that's another reason why i do turn it up folks because um sometimes you get little animals like mice or even frogs living underneath them and you know you can especially when they're living outside these things so always check underneath before you start for the first time after a long layoff right let's put that plug cap back on like that now i'm going to be starting up into indoors but i'm going to be putting my fan on my extract fan i won't be running it for long we just want to see if it runs okay let's open the door let's see if we can get it going pull the brake up Two things straight off the bat I've noticed. One, it's ticking over too fast. And two, the drive is slightly trying to pull it along. So there is an adjuster here for the drive. So we will be able to possibly adjust that, but maybe rather than move the adjuster, there is a bit, the, the plastic adjuster thing looks like you've got a little break in it there. But up here, take a bit of tension off of that drive maybe just by um, moving this spring to the first position although that doesn't feel like it's under much tension there does it looking at that that doesn't feel like much tension there so it might be a sticky mechanism because that I would have thought would have been fine yeah so we'll look into that but the first thing I'll do is just take this um, air cover off again and we'll bend that little arm back which I showed you which it looks like someone had increased the uh, speed on the tick over because it didn't really want it that's this arm here folks you can see it's quite well bent over there and if I just push that back a, a little bit like that that will bring the tick over speed back down to hopefully normal tick over I'll just um, pull this back again. Just want to inspect underneath. There we go. Just drop that down there like that. And I'm going to take the spark plug cap off again as I'm underneath it. So I'm just checking the um, pivot to see if the motor's pivoting forward and back, which it appears to be. It's not too tight, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, that seems to be doing what it should do. If that was stuck, sort of, not moving backwards and forwards, I'd be a little bit concerned with it. But what I'm going to do, just as a matter of course, down on the axle where it does pivot, I'm going to just put some uh, WD down there. But first of all, I'm going to blow this area out with my compressor. So let me do that first. Right, OK, so I'm just going to blow out just around where that pivots, folks, on the gearbox. Sometimes you can get a lot of crap in there as well and it stops the gearbox from moving side to side. And I'll just get a bit of WD just on them pivot points. Either side where it does pivot and just on there where it pivots. Just to... That seems to be moving a lot freer now, folks. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think you see that the belt's nice and slack. That seems to be moving a lot freer now, folks. And as you can see, that belt's nice and slack now. 
and it is putting tension on the the belt so i think we'll go for another start up gotta keep me workshop tidy folks Get that down there Right, okie dokie, let's drop that back down on its space, like that, get my glasses on again, always wear them when you're blowing the airline. Blow her off around the wheels. Okie dokie. Right, okay. Let's try and start it again. See, one, if the tick over slower, and two, it don't try and run away from me. Right, that's that. Put the fan back on, hold on. But it's still trying to pull away from me a little bit, folks. Again, you never know what someone else has done. There's a good chance it might have the wrong belt fitted. Or maybe even the wrong cable. That cable tends to be sticking out there quite a bit. So um, it may have something to do with that adjuster which is broken. Let's turn the fan off. So I'm going to cut this cable tie off. And have a closer look at this um, adjuster thing now. I don't know, that might be a bit tight that in that position. It might be holding it on. I mean, I could disconnect the cable. If I pull this out of here, like that, and just release the cable so that the cable is now off. Right, I've disconnected that cable now. Now, if it tries to run away with me now, obviously there is a problem with the, um, the, the arm that possibly moves it in and out. So let's just try and start it again. No cable connected, it's still trying to pull away. So, I'm gonna get it up in the air, again with that disconnected. I'm gonna see if the belt is tight, and making it like dragging, and maybe it's got the wrong belt on it. Never know, dear. So let's just pull that back. This gearbox can't turn unless the belt is making it turn. Look at that, look, it's had a new hub, hub on it as well. Hold on. Is that sitting too far down that? Right, well, one thing that's become apparent to me is that it hasn't actually got its guard on here as well. It's um, plastic inner guard. And I can see the fixing for the bottom inner guard there and that might be sticking through because that motor is not quite sitting at the right angle. So I'm just going to take this blade off. Oh, it's tight, wasn't it? Let's take that off of there. Yeah, that's a bleeding lovely sharp belt. Uh, blade. Very sharp. And this, this makes me laugh. You know when we all sharpen our blades up and we put a nice sharp edge on them and then you get people say, you don't have to have a sharp edge on it. They should be blunt. And when you buy a new one, it's true, I've seen the new ones, they've got a blunt edge on them. Well, if that's the case, why do we make so much of a fuss you know when you've got a real mower or a cylinder mower and we say oh look it's got to be able to cut paper and all that sort of stuff so it's okay for that blade to be sh sharp cutting the same blade uh, cutting the same grass 
But when we sharpen these up, people say, oh no, you've got to have it blunt, you know, you don't, you just dull the edge off. I like them sharp, that's the way I've always done it, and that's the way I'm going to continue to do it, so, uh, yeah. Next time someone says to you, don't sharpen the blade, just say, well, why do they sharpen real mower's blades, like the, the cylinder mower's in, and they've got to cut paper all the way along. If there's a little flat spot there, or a little bit where it don't cut it, people say, nope, that's got to be right, you've got to have a cutting all the way along. It's the same grass it's cutting. Just something for you to note there, folks. That's just my opinion, anyway. Right, okay. So, I'm just going to drop that belt off for a minute. Because I just want to slip that belt out of there. Which is difficult to do, because it's got a pillow in there stopping you from doing that. But, I just want to see if there's any added tension on that spring. That's as far forward as that can come. The only thing I can see stopping that coming forward anymore to take that tension off is that bolt there. And that bolt is the bolt that holds the plastic cover on. Someone's wound it right in and it's actually hitting that wheel, that pulley wheel. So that could be holding that just it off to bring tension on the blade because all that motor does is pivot backwards to increase the tension. So I'm going to take that bolt out there and hopefully that could solve our problem. I'm pretty sure that should have been an 8mm. No, it's just that plastic that I can't... Uh, I'll have to break that plastic off, I think. I'm sure it's an 8mm. So, whatever happens, it's going to need a new plastic insert to cover that belt up. Because it has actually been removed or broken off at some stage. There we go. Let's try and snap it off around there. There we go, come on. We're getting there. I've got my uh, multi-tool here, look. This might be able to cut through that plastic. These tools have got so many different uses, these multi-tools, folks. Get yourself one, gets you out of a lot of trouble sometimes. Get a bit underneath that. There we go. Now we're cooking on gas. Look at that. That's just thrown it off. Oh, there we go. Look. And that, <laughs> yeah, that's way on through. And it's touching that pulley at the back, folks. So if I just undo that now, which should be eight mil, which it is. Look at that. Look. There we go. All right. So that's out now. That can come down a little bit further now. And I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna bend this bracket down a little bit. It looks like it's actually been bent up. So that could all be part of it as well. That bracket being bent. So if I just bring it down there like that, let's move that motor up out of the way. Look at that, look, see? That's better. Now I don't think that's making contact with that wheel now. There we go. Right, okay, let's put the belt back on. All right, well, that's a lot slacker now. Right, okay. We'll whack that blade back on. Don't forget the flutes go facing upwards, folks, towards the back of the deck. So if I put that on there like that, we'll whack that back in there. There we go. Right, let's leave that cable disconnected. Let's stand it back up on its hoints, on its henches, or whatever you want to call it. So that's disconnected still. Don't forget, when we had that before, it was still trying to drive. Let's give a little bit of a push on the old primer bulb. There we go. Pull your brake up. Let's try again. I ain't put a plug lead on, have I? Times I've done that. We've all done it, haven't we, folks? <laughs> right, here we go. There we go, look at that, look. Let me know. Right, well, that's all right, folks. Let's just uh, take that off and put the drive cable back in. Bear with me. And make sure we have got drive. Let's start it up again. Right, 
let's take it outside. Oh, yep, that's right. There you go. So to be honest with you, all this needs is a little bit of a clean up and um, I'm gonna have to order one of those guards for underneath. There is a local person who lives around the corner from me or just up the road who uh, sells second hand lawnmower parts. So I'll give them a phone call failing that I'll look on eBay. And uh, yeah, cause I can't sell it like that. Buy one of them, probably costs about eight to 10 pounds. I've invested no money in this to be, to be honest with you. It runs fine. It uh, was a little bit hunty at first, but don't forget this has been sitting around all last year uh, out in the window. The, the diaphragm probably just needs to be uh, bedded in again. And uh, yeah, just give this one a wipe its backside and uh, tidy it up a bit. New thing underneath, and this has got to be a 90 pound lawnmower, 90 to 100 pound lawnmower, being a self drive one as well. Anyway, just bringing this to you folks, it's something to do. Um, hopefully now we'll get back on the car stuff and doing some more car stuff, but there's gonna be lawnmower stuff. We've got other stuff which we're going to be doing as well, but do check out my other videos. And uh, what's he doing? He's chasing shadows, look. We're going to be um, obviously trying to up the content now a bit more, but our, our other channel is sort of taking precedence at the moment, so we've got a lot of work we're doing on that channel. And that's Butler's Empire, by the way. Uh, totally different than what we do here. But um, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. <laughs>